Hey y'all, happy Tuesday. Um, today has been very exhausting. I think I'm sick. And um, I've just been feeling really like crappy today, but I still filmed and worked on some stuff because like the next few weeks are gonna be crazy and I know that like I'm I feel like I'm always saying that now like oh the next couple weeks are gonna be crazy like things just keep happening where I'm like oh like I'm about to have a busy couple weeks and then it'll be another chill couple weeks and then it'll kind of you know like kind of goes in cycles but Mark just found out that he got promoted in, at his job. Well, we already knew he got promoted at his job, but basically he was got the verbal like confirmation that the job was his. But um, he the the com basically he works for Nike. Just FYI, I don't know if I ever told y'all that, and I don't know if he's comfortable with me telling y'all that because he's usually like kind of low key but not really at the same time about it but yeah he works for nike and he got a promotion and so um nike went on a hiring freeze um this summer and to where like he had to wait to kind of like figure out when he was gonna actually move to oregon and like work at the world headquarters and all that kind of stuff and so he just found out last week that he has to be there moved in and in, in like the office by October 31st so that kind of was like a oh shoot moment um yeah because he had he's like obviously he lives in an apartment we don't live together but we're always together you guys can see but he lit has a roommate and stuff that um, they have to break their lease and and it's all this little Little kind of like background stuff that like is just super complicated so um we were trying to like kind of get all that together and i'm helping him obviously through the whole process and um helping him get everything situated luckily nike has a really great like moving relocation program where basically they take care of almost everything uh for you logistically and like financially like they pay for your movers and ship your car and all that stuff so we don't have to worry about those like logistical things but at the same time it's like okay getting ready for stuff he's still finishing out his current position and like he travels a lot for his current position so like trying to figure out like what is he gonna do um like which projects is he gonna finish out which projects is he gonna leave behind and like all that kind of stuff so it's just like a lot going on plus um you know he wants me to help him and obviously i want to help him move as much as possible so figuring out the days where i'll be going up there how long i'll be staying and um kind of just figuring out all those logistics because you know god thank god that i have a job that i can do anywhere because now you know i can be in oregon for you know a week two weeks three weeks at a time and then come back to dallas or fly out for whatever jobs that i get um from oregon and go to wherever so um it's a matter of just working it in luckily in my lifestyle like that's not a hard thing to do and so um yeah just kind of figuring out like flights and like dates and stuff because obviously like i am um having a few things coming up one of which being the most immediate thing is i am speaking at the uh revolt music conference and i'm gonna be on a panel with some amazing amazing women one of which is my manager so i'm so excited to be doing something with her where we're working together in a different way than how we usually do and so i'm so excited she was my connect into revolt and i'm so excited to just like penetrate that market because it's a different environment than what i'm usually in i'm usually all beauty all hair whatever and you know revolt tv and revolt music is a, is a different genre it's the entertainment industry so it's a new kind of um experience for me that i'm really excited to um um take advantage of and I get to go to all the different um, seminars and things actually participate in the conference which will be really cool too so it's not necessarily all work for me um, it's also gonna be a lot of you know um, just engaging with people learning a lot of things so I'm excited about that I love conferences um, even when I was um, 
in 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 education, which is where what I got my masters and my undergrad in. When I go would go to educational conferences and stuff, um, professional conferences, I always loved those experiences. So. Um, I'm excited to go to the Revolt Conference and actually participate in stuff and be there. And it's in Miami, so of course I'm so like ready for that because I love Miami. Miami is one of my favorite cities. And so I'm sad though because Mark can't come on this trip. Um, you guys can see that he gets to travel with me a lot, which I love and I'm so thankful for. And we love to travel together. And so um, I was trying to get him to come to Miami with me because he's never even been to Miami. That's another big city he's ever been to. Um, but he's traveled a lot, just never to Miami. And so I was like, dang, this would be the perfect opportunity because we'll have things to do and stuff but um he's got work um so he's got to be in houston that weekend so he won't be able to make it but i'll be coming straight from oregon to miami so it's gonna be a lot of hopping around for me so literally i will leave from dallas go to oregon stay for like three days then from oregon i'll go to miami stay in miami for about three days then from miami go back to dallas be in dallas for like a week and then i'll be back in oregon for about a week um because that'll be when he officially moves and stuff the first trip to oregon is like a house hunting trip um, so we will be looking for apartments and stuff for him and, and trying to get him settled and all that stuff. So, yeah, um, it'll be interesting. I need to, like, start, like, I need to do, like, travel content more because, like, how I pack and um, all that kind of stuff. I've got it down to a science now. So you guys let me know if you guys want to see, like, travel videos or how to, you know, travel lightly, which I don't usually travel light. Um, it's a feat if I can get a carry-on bag only which I've done a few times now so I've been good um, but yeah so how to do those kind of thing how to like prepare your hair for like traveling and stuff um, so yeah I can do that if you guys just let me know down below if you guys want that type of content hey y'all good morning it is Wednesday and I am off running more errands I'm just driving right and I'm listening to Solange's album of course and I'm listening to don't touch my hair and you know I was just thinking like how I interesting it is that you know um, in the African American community that we have such a intense and heavy feeling towards hair and we all know the, the documentaries that have gone out the the blogs, the articles, the everything that talks about black hair and what it means to us as a people and what it means to people who aren't black and in the industry of, um, you know, pop culture and all these things and all of this. And, um, you know, I was I also stumbled upon this video, which I don't know why I watch these things, but at the same time, I do know why, because it's like, I want to hear another perspective. I want to hear another side. Um, and so it's really easy, so I'll premise this, it's really easy to surround yourself with people who think like you, with um, with material that agrees with your, um, with your style of thinking, with your point of view, and it takes more to actually listen to another side and really critically think about, you know, why do I believe what I believe versus why do they believe what they believe and you know a lot of times people's beliefs are very very deep rooted um a lot of times it is it is supported by their culture by the way that they grew up by their parents points of view all of these things right that's how we create who we are as person and our moral values and all of these things how we live our lives so i was listening and slash watching this video about how <laughs> how this woman feels as though and obviously there's a community that also agrees with her that feel that biracials biracials have hijacked the natural hair community and the natural hair movement 
And I was just, I, I watched it the other day and I was like, hmm, okay. I, I listened to it for a few minutes trying to gain perspective and trying to understand because at the same time, I understand my point of privilege in the natural hair community. I understand that my looser texture is more welcomed a lot of times. And, you know, I try to help myself. I try to force myself to identify, okay, where am I exercising my points of privilege in this industry? And where am I just being in this industry and in this movement? And why is it that I can't be fully accepted in this movement? Because I think that it's all subjective, right? There's going to be some people that say you are part of the movement, like you are just as much as anybody else. And then there's going to be others that say, well... You haven't had as much struggle, and you haven't had as much this, and you haven't had as much that. And I agree, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't grow up with 4C or 4B hair, type 4 hair. I didn't grow up with that, you know? But I don't think that it should be, um, it shouldn't be a thing to diminish my own struggles of accepting myself and loving my own hair and feeling the pressures from society to have a certain type of hair. And while it may not be as drastic of a jump from 4C or 4B hair to straight hair, I still had a jump from 3B hair to 1A hair, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, but the main point is, is that I try to have a healthy balance between taking pride in who I am and how, what my hair is like and all that, but at the same time recognizing that, you know what? I am a little bit be better received um, at a lot of levels um, and I understand that a lot of times when I get booked for certain jobs you know they use me as their you know woman of color or the racially ambiguous she could be Hispanic she could be black she could be this she could be that I know that they're using me for that and at the end of the day you know I had to come to accept my gifts for what they were and if me being welcomed into these spaces helps for women to later be accepted then i'm gonna take pride in that and i'm gonna be proud of that versus every step of the way contradicting and feeling negatively about what i get the opportunity to do if i'm sitting in an opportunity that is really amazing and the whole time i'm thinking well they're only using me because of this and they're only using me because of this and da da da, da like that's a negative point of view to look at my life and I choose not to do that I'm sorry some people could choose to live differently but this is my life and I'm choosing to live it the way that I want to so it's like you know I do things that to try to help you know what I'm saying like I embrace all textures and I am definitely not one to just admire one type I love texture I love texture in all its forms and I even wear my own hair in ways that a lot of women who have my texture don't you know I wear head wraps all the time I do braids I do twists you know I do all these things because I love the flexibility and the freedom of having textured hair you know, I will wear my hair straight, but I will also wear cornrows. Like, I wear everything under the sun because I'm creative and I love different looks. And, you know, I'd never want to be boxed into one thing. Obviously, I have a looser textured curl pattern. Like, we're not getting away from that. And with that being said, I think that's, you know, whatever. But what I wanted to also kind of, um, you know combat with what she was saying was that she was like biracials I'm like damn I've never been I've never heard the word biracial used in such a derogatory way ever it made me feel a way because I'm like first off damn like where's all the animosity coming from but I understand where it's coming from when you really think about it not to say that it's right or wrong but it just is what it is and people have the right to feel the way that they feel and who knows what type of life experiences that woman has had I can't take away whatever has happened to her that has made her feel that way because I think that when somebody feels as strongly as she does you know sometimes you got to think well maybe some of it is valid and I can't, you know, I'm not going to disagree with that at all because I think that everybody has a right to feel the way that they feel. But at the same time, I think we have to come from a place of love with everything. And you don't, you just, there's a reason why people who have negative out, outlooks on life and negative outlooks on certain things 
continue to stay at a really low level in life you know like if you never allow yourself to think bigger to think better to think more positive about yourself and about the world around you you will never progress like and so I just think I wonder you know where is she from who is she what does she do what kind of life does she live and you know that's that's on her but I just wanted to say something because it I was listening to the song like I said and um I stopped myself the other day because I was listening to Don't Touch My Hair. And in my the first thought I had was like, you know, for some reason I never had an issue with people touching my hair. I never had that issue. I never uh, was mad at anybody touching my hair. But then I had to stop myself and say, whoa, Jade, like, you may not have had that, that negative experience, but there are so many other women that have. So... You have to remember that. You have to remember that everybody's experience is not yours. So you have to recognize it and then, you know, recognize that everybody's experience is not positive. There are people who have had their hair torn down to pieces as far as their self-esteem goes, you know, like... I have to remember that and you know I try to be so positive all the time that you know I don't I, I neglect facing the reality that a lot of women have had a tough time with their hair and you know to all of you who may be watching this that have had a tough time with your hair accepting it loving it my deepest sympathy to you and, and my deepest love to you because I know I've, I've had struggled as well but you know what I can put my struggle aside, whatever meter you want to measure it on, to embrace and appreciate the fact that you have also struggled and that you have also felt a way about your hair. And and that is something that, you know, I, I pray and I hope that we as women, as individuals, can grow from and learn from and get out of. Because that's that's a personal struggle that I think every woman has, but it's on a different level for different people, right? Just as any other life experience is different for every single person that goes through it. But at the same time, everybody goes through it in some way, form, or fashion. And so, uh, yeah, I was I was listening to that video and um, I was thinking also like, wow. To think about it in this capacity, let's think about it. Do white women sit around judging each other oh my gosh she's blonde now she's not as this or as that because she's blonde now she's a natural brunette doesn't that sound crazy like but that's what we do we do that we do that we judge each other when we get relaxers we judge each other when we choose not to go natural or we choose to go natural you know like it's a big debacle and it's like, why? But we know why. We know why. Past historical context, why? But I think at the same time, we have to make a decision to let go of what the past brought us and embrace what the future is bringing us. Because the future is always going to be brighter. I truly believe that the future is always going to be brighter if you choose for it to be. You don't have to live in negative t negativity. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to live in a judgmental state where you're always criticizing everybody and everything around you. You don't have to live like that. You have to choose not to. And that's the biggest thing. You have to choose not to live that way. And I don't think a lot of people make that conscious decision because I don't think a lot of people know that it is a decision. I think they're so wrapped up in that mindset that they don't even realize that I could choose not to be this way. I could choose not to think this way. Because you know they say that, I think it's like for every two positive thoughts, there are 10 negative thoughts. It's like some crazy ratio. And so you have to use more willpower to think positively. Uh, and I truly believe that in the beginning, it is a lot harder to think positively because you're so used to thinking negatively. But once you start on that positive road, you will just soar and it will become easier and easier because you become stronger and stronger when it comes to thinking positively and living a good life and choosing happiness. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because it was something on my mind and let me know your thoughts, you know? How do y'all feel about it? Do you disagree with me? Do you feel 
like you know you can understand where i'm coming from is there another perspective that i'm not taking in consideration because i really want to understand to be, just be able to learn on my own and to also share with you all kind of where i am mentally and, and as growing as a person and especially somebody who is um you know a part of the bigger natural hair industry and bigger aspect because I am doing campaigns, I am working with brands and I talk to brands about these things. Um, so I wanna know, what do you guys say? What do you want your message to be that I deliver to brands and things like that, you know? So let me know. Okay, so today sucks because my I woke up and my back, like my tailbone has been killing me all day, y'all. Like, it's been really bad. Like, I'm like in a lot of pain. And I'm like, what the heck happened? And like, last night, um, I just laid down. Like, I didn't do anything crazy. But I did fall on my back, like, this past weekend when I was in New York. <laughs> Long story. Don't ask. <laughs> But, but, but yeah, so I'm afraid that like something is like shifted. Maybe I slept on it wrong yesterday. And so now it's like hurting. So I'm like sitting on a heating pad. Um, and I was in the middle of like filming a bunch of stuff earlier. I filmed uh, my, my story time a little bit earlier. Um, and so I needed to really finish this video about my clip-ins which they're still in right now it's just in a bun um but i just don't have the energy and my freaking back hurts like i just can't so i've decided to um call it a day as far as like trying to film and now i'm just working on some content for my website so um i don't know like do y'all actually read blogs and stuff like that you know, I'm trying to figure out the balance with my website because sometimes I'm on a good roll where I've got a lot of content on there as far as like articles that I've written or like blog posts. But I don't know, like, do y'all read like that? <laughs> or would you rather like more content on YouTube or more on my website? I don't know. What do you want to see? Have you ever even seen my website? I really don't promote it that much um, outside of like whenever I post something on there. I never really like push it to my other platforms because it's just a lot y'all man oh it's just a lot like you would think that like this job would be easy because it's just like oh you just like you know do fun stuff no like i'm working every single day like every day i work seven days a week and um so now i'm about to write two blog posts that i'm doing with colgate for this season like fall beauty and like halloween stuff so I'm gonna work on that because I can do that from my bed. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Saturday and my family is about to be here. I'm so excited for them to come visit me. It's gonna be my mom, my little brother, and my little sister, Madison. So um, I've been up cleaning all morning, <laughs> um, trying to make sure that everything is like nice and good for them. And um, I have, I'm sick. I am hyped up on Dayquil. Um, um, and Motrin because I don't know if I told y'all on here, uh, but I really hurt my back. Um, it's really hurting lately. Like earlier or yesterday, it was hard to even walk or lay down. So it was like discomfort on all levels. But yeah, so hopefully I'm good by next week because I start traveling again and I need to be 100. So yeah. Um, I figured I would show y'all my apartment a bit because I still haven't done an apartment tour, but I feel like I'm not going to do a full on video apartment tour because I don't know. I just, I just don't want to kind of thing, but I'll show you guys now since it's clean somewhat. I still am trying to figure out like storage and everything because, um, I have so much stuff, like just a lot of stuff, like little things. So anyway, I'll show you guys kind of, um, what it's looking like so this that's my view you guys have seen my view before sorry there's still like little bits of things kind of everywhere um 
TV. Um, Mark has all his, well, not all, because he has way more than this. Sneakers over here, and then other stuff that um, I'm doing videos with. I need to take that back to Z Gallery. He's got more shoe boxes. That, that over there is like PR stuff that I just got yesterday, so I've still got to go through it. Um, and then this is my couch. I'm doing like a purple, gray, white kind of color scheme. Um, so yeah, and then all these pillows, I mainly got them from Overstock, especially the sequin ones. I've seen those run for like a hundred dollars, and I got them on out Overstock for like 35 so a piece. So that was actually a really good deal. Um, and then this is my carpet. I got this carpet at uh, Urban Outfitters. It was on sale uh, for like 150 This ottoman I got from Overstock also. It was like 300 which I was so mad because I did not want to spend that much on an ottoman. But this is so cute and it's so big. It was like bigger than I even expected it to be. And it's tough so it's like a white leather type of deal so I really like it and um, I'm glad I spent the money on it because I actually it works perfectly in my little like living room area and then um, this is my bedroom this is my bed again I have like more windows and stuff here um, mark stuff over there <laughs> um, and then my desk area which is a mess right now because you guys will see I have all this new stuff that I need to like organize and like unpackage and figure out what I'm gonna do with um, and then a computer obviously all of this this used to be so organized like I had it so nice when I first moved and now it's like just products everywhere because I like to organize each shelf or each section by brand so that I know like where everything is kind of deal because I have so much stuff obviously um, but I got a ton of stuff at BeautyCon um, but I am going to be I'm doing my giveaway you guys have a few more days to do my or enter my giveaway so I'm giving away a lot of this stuff so that I can make room for um, for more things that I get or the stuff that I just got um, this is my bathroom um, I love my um, I love this this is like oh everything um, and then yeah um, on my skincare stuff I got that um, stand from uh, home goods and um, I got that from Home Goods. Also, that from Home Goods. I love me some Home Goods. You can find some good stuff in there um, from time to time. Obviously, the shower. I have a tub in there. I guess I'll show you all the tub. Um, tub area, shower area, um, toilet, hanging <laughs> clothes to dry. And I'm so pissed because this red shirt I had, all the fuzzy off the red shirt. Um, came off on the rest of my clothes so once this stuff dries I'll have to take a lint roller to everything because it just got everywhere um, so yeah and then this is my closet um, yeah it's like a mess an absolute like mess in here but don't judge me please <laughs> and then my laundry room obviously back here um, yeah and it gets loud so I like keep that door closed because it's it gets pretty loud but yeah this is basically it um, I need to do something with this today that's happening um, hopefully before they get here and um, yeah it's still kind of like coming together somewhat um, but yeah this is this is my place and you guys saw it when I first moved in so now there's stuff in here <laughs> but yeah so I'll be green okay two three okay you can pick any of them to be you want to, you want the question read to you or do you want it to read? I to want us? the question told. I want the answer told to me. Well, you can't okay. have that. Okay, mom. <laughs> what 2010 ad showed Andy Samberg and Bill Hader selling a special mom-proof filter for which popular social media service? A what? A mom-proof filter. Mom? Mom-proof filter for which popular social media network? Oh, I know what that is. That's all I got. That's the final answer? Mm -hmm. It's Facebook. Oh shit, that's what I couldn't think of. Get to her. Stop. Well, they're not really. Put them in Florida then. Tell <laughs> Which Charlie's Angel star moved from Los Angeles to New York City to be Waston uh, to Johnny Lee Miller's Sherlock in elementary? 
Yes. I can't see you. The sun. How much should I put in Can't see the black music? It's like because the sunlight is coming up from the wrong way. How much should I put my name to shine it up? Just a little, like, a, like not even a dime size. Oh, this shirt was right on time, Jay. Yeah. We are at the state fair. Oh, oh my God. I have no voice. What's happened? I have no voice. Oh. Oh, Somehow, some way, I lost it yesterday. I don't even know if y'all can hear me right now. But we're at the fair. You wanna wait? We're about to eat some really good food. We're in a warehouse of some sort right now. This sucks. This really sucks that I don't have no voice. So, no more talking. But this is the last segment of this week's vlog. Hope y'all enjoyed. And you're going to really enjoy watching us eat. in the middle, you gotta try this. Chocolate covered waffles, strawberry balls. I wanna try one. Balls. What'd you order? What is that again? Strawberry waffle balls. Something. No. The strawberry looks mushy. No, it's still actually crispy, kinda. Wanna try it? No. This is a twice something potato. What? A twice baked potato fry. Dr. Pickersay for a lively performance by Six of Beer. 